Or forget. Remember that there is a secondary channel. Well, it's like four channels. But the other channel with the sound demos on it will also have the reviews where I go back and review my old reviews to see if they still hold up. Because I'm taking them off this channel. Because this channel's got to be dedicated to product reviews and other weird shit. Wallpaper in the description. This is the Shit Magni I Am Match. And it's getting its own video because shit sent it to me. And I'm like, all right, I'll give you its own video. Um, so it's forced me to sit down and listen to... And I, I thought it was specifically for IMs, like just IMs, just IMs. So apparently it has a three-way gain switch and it can go from the lightest weight finesse IMs with no noise floor to monster headphones. So I brought the Tim Socks back down from my office. Tim Sock 1024s. These are like a $2,000 Plano that are very hard to drive and very particular. I've got the Caspians here from um, Apos. I've got KPH30Is because... Yes. I brought up my Dunu Zens, which are the most sensitive IMs. And then I took two randoms off the table. Um, these are the Etymotic Evos, featuring Estron, which sounds like an estrogen supplement, um, and the Fio EM5s. These will get, obviously, their own review. This is like the first time I'm listening to the EM5s, but I just needed a good variation of a couple of IMs to see how the IM match works. Are they, are the IM Magni, I, ma, ma, I, what the hell is this? They do a thing. It's the I Magni. Get it? I M. The M from the I M is in the beginning of Magni. And what's interesting, because I, I wasn't sure, because this is the third revision they offer. They offer three different Magnis. They have the Heresy, they have the Magni 3 Plus, which I reviewed those two, which had very different sound signatures, and they have the I M Magni. And I was looking at it to see the topology and see which one they converted into this. And apparently, it's neither. Whereas the Magni 3 was the warm, like the warm, softer one, the one that I actually probably liked more, uses a fully discrete, fully complementary, all bipolar, <laughs> giggity, wait, that's not a giggity, symmetrical current feed, blah, 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 DC servo. And then the Heresy, which was the very accurate, clean level, like linear one, uses the OPA, um, 1688 op amp for voltage feedback with an eight stage output buffer with no local loops. And then the IM Magni uses an OPA 1656 for voltage gain with local feedback and only six stages per gain of output buffers with no local loops. So it's different from both of the other ones. And so I'm trying to figure out, I think it's going to lean, obviously, if it's got, if it's using op amps, it's a little less Magni 3 ish. So I'm assuming it's going to take a little bit more of that um, linear. Step. Wait, where was I? I was talking oh, wallpapers. Wait. Oh, this is twenty dollars more, by the way, to add the three, the third gain stage instead of just high and low. Can I just point? I I need to, I comments below video. Best TV show soundtrack. Best music made for not just that they don't play Elvis or they play fucking the Doors. I'm talking about composed for the show music go. Because I'm sitting here and I'm stuck on Bear McCreary's Get Battlestar Galactica, and I'm pretty sure Stormy New Caprica, uh, Violence and Variations, Temple of Fire, all the, the, the all, pretty sure the Battlestar Galactica. As much as that show fuck failed at the end, the fucking soundtrack, heeding the call to all on the Watchtower, was just the, a perfect music moment in television. So, what's your pick? Because I mean, Game of Thrones is way up there. Regardless of how the show fucking ended, it was still a great fucking soundtrack. Now we're on Little Witch Academia. I, if I don't count anime, no anime, just I'm talking about real, live, English-speaking, English-speaking, no handmaiden's tale or handmaiden, um, English-speaking soundtracks from a TV show. By the way, these EM5s are interesting. They have no low end because they're an actual earbud. They're the most comfortable earbud. And they have the craziest ass wire connection. Like, if you wanted to spend money on an eye on an on an earbud, this is the one, I think. Oh, I should probably talk about the amp. Okay, so I'm gonna pick it up. Um, I'm using these world's best cables, because world's best cable sent me all the cables. So every time I use a world's best cable, I gotta tell you about the world's best cable. These are using eminence locking RCAs, which you actually have to unscrew and then you can release it. Because when you put it on, you can choose to rotate that to literally have it squeeze the motherfucker so that it can't come out. 
Um, not sure if that's absolutely needed unless you're like putting a stereo in a car. Like that would be great for in a car. And you like have subs in the back and you just don't want it to rattle off for driving. So there you go. But yeah, link to these uh, specific eminence, real thick, soft cables. Uh, plugging actually, I'm feeding out of the Matrix Sabre 3 DAC, which is like a $3,000 DAC. And I said I wasn't going to do $1,000, but it's got a touchpad of glass in the front and it's beautiful. We'll talk about that later on in another review. In the meantime, this has the basic Magni layout. Power plug, there's a big old power brick chunk down there, 16 volt AC. You have a rear facing on off switch, which doesn't bother me so bad on a unit this small because the odds of you not being able to reach back there, you'd have to shove this under something specifically. It gets kind of warm, which is not very heresy like. That's another thing It's because it's, now we're back to a little bit of warmth in the actual unit. Not quite Magni 3 hot, like temperature hot, but not heresy like ice cold. So it's, it's kind of like a middle ground, I think, in sound too. As far as like adding warmth and adding soundstage, the Magni, Magni 3 Plus was a lot of that. The heresy was like very, very linear and cold, and the unit itself was cold. And this is sort of like just warm to the touch, and I can get it. Back to the exploration of the fuck it thing. Um, power on off in the back. You have a output so that when you unplug the headphone, you could have this go to feed speakers. It's a pre out. It's fine. I, I don't know why you'd use it really. In some, something like this, why would you bother passing through? Just get Y splitters and control the volume elsewhere. Just my thing. I never even test these. You just, you don't, once you plug this in, that's off. You unplug it, it's on. At least that's how I remember it working. I wasn't going to set up a hole with a fucking thing on the desk. Here's your gain switch, which, if you did use the other set of RCAs, would be very difficult to reach and control because you'd have to literally pick the unit up to be able to articulate it up and down. Because at least with it open, you can do that one finger here. That's the lowest gain, medium gain, high gain. By the way, this swing in decibels, if you read the website. Um, because what you're paying for with the extra $20 is somehow different internals. But you're paying for that three-way gain switch. Because usually the gain is zero and then plus something. And this has zero plus something and also minus 10. So the minus 10 is for the most sensitive I am, is my Dunu Zens, which are my most sensitive headphone I am, you name it. This thing is my like stethoscope to amplifiers. I wanna know how much this SMSL HO200, how much noise floor it has, plug this fucking thing into it, mute the, pause the music and turn the volume up and down. Did that get scratched? No. Turn the volume up and down, then flip the gain, turn the volume up and down, flip the gain, turn the volume up and down. Okay, this, new, this is noisier, this is quiet. That's how I judge, literally with this one product. So when I plug the Dunu Zens into this, um, low gain, dead silent. You can't hear, you pause that, you turn the gain all the way up, all the way down, you hear nothing. Medium gain, basically the same difference. There's a hint of something at like the two o'clock, three o'clock, it's like, am I hearing that? Or am I hearing the actual scraping of the volume knob on the pot? Couldn't be sure. High gain, you hear something. And the reason you hear something, because I, I got off on a tangent, which is welcome to Zero Reviews. I go off on tangents, and then somehow people still trust my opinion on things and support me on Patreon and subscribe. So linked in the comments below. Um, zero is the, the medium. Where I am, it, actually, where am I? Hold on. Medium is there. 12 o'clock. Okay. Switch it down. That's 10 decibels off. So we go from zero to negative 10 dB. Good for real sensitive IMs. Then you go up. That's plus 15. That's a 25 decibel swing without moving the volume knob. You just put the volume knob at noon and go zero, negative 10, zero, plus 15. It's like which is kind of like a little bit frightening because the switch is on the back and you can't really see it. And my only recommendation is you always push down, down all the way, plug in your thing, turn it up. These uh, EM5s actually take a little bit of power to get going. 
I'm pretty satisfied with them on medium at noon. Noon is where you want to be on an amp. You never want to have an amp so close to the top that you have no headroom. And you don't want to have an amp where it's so low to the bottom where you're actually still where the pot hasn't leveled out yet. So you always want to be roughly around halfway. And whatever you're amplifying, speakers, headphones, you know, pacemakers, you want to be like 50 50% 50, 50 up. This way it's too loud, you go to 47. It's too quiet, you go to 53. You don't want to have to go to like 90 to make it the right volume. If you have to go to 90 on your amp constantly, you need a bigger amp. That's the rule. And I was really, with the headphones I have here, the Caspians, which I haven't reviewed yet, those are those are the APOS, new, new baby boy, those worked just fucking fine on low gain at noon. On the low, on the negative 10, Caspians worked fine. But the, the KPH30i is going, okay, those will probably work at uh, low gain. Nope, medium. Those need a medium. Tim Socks, you need maximum gain. And then the three IMs, the Dunu Zens, are definitely a low gain IM. You don't want to high any more than that. These Atomotics actually take a little power. These Atomotics, I was running these on high fucking gain. Because there's such a small little opening, they're squeezing it through. And now I'm I'm just living I'm just living in these EM5s, which have no bass because they're a what's it called a uh, look at that fucking wire though with the with the wire that can like it has a rotating locking collar for the connector like who why can't headphones have literally that but I'm, I want to get to the review of that I'm just gonna be like this is the best connector system cool as fuck. Why does every other headphone come with one wire or a hole of the wire? Like, Odyssey should have that system. What is it, two? It's, mm. Anyway, I am match. Let's just get it over with. Do I think it's worth it? For an If you are already in the market for a Magni, which is the made in Texas, American made. Texas, by the way, is in America. Sometimes you have to double check that every once in a while. But um, the Texas made shit Magni you might, even regardless of you, like, oh, I don't have, I don't have a need for IMs, Zeos. You might want to get this anyway, this specific one. Spend the extra twenty bucks, because having a low, having a low gain setting, a low low gain setting that has absolutely no noise floor, can be beneficial because you don't know which headphones are going to come out of nowhere and be like, by the way, I don't need, I don't need that medium shit where you, it's loud here. I want it on low and turn it up. Now, if you can control your source like you can here with a fucking touchpad on the glass and literally lower the volume, which is so cool. A beeps, by the way. Like a piece of medical equipment. Um, then you can sort of get away with uh, having, if you have like, if you have the Modi DAC, which is just fixed output, and you want to go lower, then you're dealing with just the pot at the lowest level. But if you have a fixed, a non-fixed output, you can just get whatever. I still would recommend this just to get that lower... 10 dB down. Plus, it is sort of a middle ground between the sound of the Magni 3 and the sound of the Heresy. If you've had both, and I literally did both in a review, it was like, well, I kind of would have to keep both, wouldn't I? I'd have to keep the Heresy for the linear nature of it, and I have to keep the Magni 3 because it's nice and warm. It just softens everything a little bit. I know after doing the, um, I did that review of all the little uh, dongle DAX, like 8, 9, 12 different fucking amplifiers in little USB powered things, probably the most variation I've heard in amplifiers in a long while, because they're all very, very small. So all the technology has to be very different if you're coming from a different company. So I know the amplification can make a huge difference. And having this be like a perfect middle ground where I can plug in the Tim socks, crank that up to maximum because there's no choice. Yeah, we're at noon at high, which is which is high. It's a high gain. And I'm actually the Tim Socks are doing okay. I like the Tim Socks here because they really don't like super linear amplification. They're too grand, and they're probably the most linear headphone I've ever touched. And if you put them in a very boring amplifier like an A90, they are just sterile. So when I plug them into this, and I'm actually sitting here, you listen to Eminem or Corn or Red Hot Chili Peppers, but the string quartet version, because it's actually well recorded and not garbage. Um, very 90s playlist right now. This, this is an enjoyable listen. So it might take the full draw power of the goddamn uh, Tim Socks to get it out, but there's definitely a lean 
away from linear and toward little, just a little, enough fun. Enough, enough fun and warmth and smoothness that it's like, okay, pleasurable listening experience. That's basically all I have to say about this amplifier. I do want to listen to these more though, like a lot more. Chromatics, the river, I'll skip ahead a little bit. I wish I could play music. I wish I could just play music on YouTube. That'd be great. But then I'd get demonetized and blocked and then never... Once your shit's demonetized, YouTube has no reason to promote it. Because if you can't put ads on it, then they can't put ads on it, then they can't get paid. And I don't get paid. No one gets paid. So like, why, why bother? Why show this more people to use more of our bandwidth? YouTube's got a real... You, it's a business problem. It's a business. It's a use, usage and business problem. Anyway, that's it. I'll link to all the things I tested th with this. I'll link to this. Uh, I don't think this is on Amazon. I think you have to get this direct from shit. For the specific version, I'll I'll check. Link to these fucking bizarre uh, eminence locking world's best cables. These are actually not that expensive. I thought these would be the most expensive ones they sent. Those KT, uh, KTE ones with the, the the super lightweight plastic, those are way more expensive. Those are like 170 a fucking set, and I almost puked. But these, which are like, these make me feel like a serious audiophile. Like oh, I haven't screwed my RCAs in to lock them. The link to those, uh, I'll link to this on Apos. I'm pretty sure Apos sent me that matrix, um, which is a DAC that's expensive. I totally wouldn't do it. That wallpaper in the description. Um, like I said earlier, Patreon and Subscribestar, if you like this channel, you get to see reviews early for $5 a month. You get to participate in yard sales for $5 a month. Shit's probably not going to ask for this back. Um, I'm not sh I probably won't keep it because I've got a ton of other headphone amps. Like, li literally, I, it doesn't, not a metric ton, like a Lego ton. It's a, that's a specific amount of weight that can do IEMs at least as well as this. Unless I brought this to like a fucking sitting room where I just sat there to do IMs. No, I don't need more places to play music. So this will probably end up in the yard sale. First to the 10th of every month, things that I have been sent by companies or purchased myself or people actually who are like, I don't need this. You want to just take my old stuff? I'm like, sure. Donate to the channel. Go in a yard sale. First to the 10th, uh, I will ship international if you pay half the shipping. Uh, bidding starts at zero on 99% of the items. There's some really bulky items that I sort of minimum thing on it but um so see reviews early participate in yard sales um access to the sound demo archived uh youtube back to youtube being youtube and lawyers being lawyers 200 of the sound demos disappeared off the internet it's not worth re-recording them or i can't re-record them or i can't edit them hard enough so now all those sound demos are located in a private telegram channel that is specifically for five dollar patrons um or higher you can get to those, all the modern sound demos, things that have been done in the last month or two months, I should say. I have all those sound demos, at least the audio from them, uploaded in FLAC. So there's no compression at all. My old sound demos, I was compressing to MP3. Anything new since I moved to the to this house, basically, or the last few months, has been FLAC recordings. So everything's uncompressed lossless. You can get that there. Uh, $10 a month gets you the behind the scenes private Telegram chat, which if you're trying to ask me questions, you can ask me in the comments. Maybe I'll see it. Especially if I'm going through there looking for who's got the best uh, movie, TV show soundtrack. Not movie soundtrack, TV show with live actors. Am I limiting it to live actors or cartoons too? I guess cartoons would count. Maybe. Like Family Guy doesn't have a great soundtrack or anything. It's not like three to ding, da ding, ding. Is it the same? Um, so the $10 a month chat will get you into a private chat with 300 other members, which means they're paying my mortgage. And I answer any questions they want, just at Zeo Spontera when you're in there. There's also a private swap meet associated with that, that you're in for life. That if you join the $10 chat, you can talk to people, you can ask me questions. And if you want to trade your gear with just people who have been $10 patrons of mine, you can do that because they're pretty trustworthy. Um, after that, there's uh, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum. The forums are blossoming. And have developed their own little, like, like it's great because all reviewers, like, we don't care. If you're a reviewer of a thing, we put official post for an item. You show up, you comment on it. If you ever reviewed a post, post your review of it. Get a nice discussion going. We try not to be, we actually aren't sponsored yet. That site is like, I'm just paying for it out of pocket, which is fine. Um, thank you to my patrons who are actually paying for that, even though I don't specify that. Um... Yeah, that'll eventually get sponsored. We're going to try to keep it away from, like, expensive cables, although I wouldn't mind world's best cables because even though some of these are pricey, they're not as pricey as they could be if they were in the audiophile space. 
um, and wallpapers, and that's it, I'm done. First review of the day, I'm gonna clear this up. I might do some more IMs. Uh, I might do a couple amps. I'd like, oh, this whole pile has to be fucking done. It's, I did one out of five, and there's like five more over there. So I come back every two days. It used to be every day, then I lost my mind. Every two days on Z Reviews, a new review. There's also an unboxing channel, which I unbox every other day, just because it's just I just get so much stuff. Uh, it's on Boxing Channel every other day, Cooking Channel every week or two weeks, depending on if I remember to release one. I live stream on Twitch. I don't want to say that word where the copy, where the where the um, closed captioning can hear me, because then it'll be like he said the he said the bad word. Twitch. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm good. You good? I'm good. You're good. We're good. I'll see you in two days.